Okay, everyone, today we have a update regarding the other firearms or the Title I style firearms that was initially marketed by Franklin Armory. Again, great people, super happy to have their support. They've been great people to me. But the Title I others. Now, we have a bit of an update when it comes to the legislation or the regulations when it comes to registration of these firearms. We're going to discuss a whole lot today. Before I even get going, though, I do have to say that I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. I'm going to be reading a ton of stuff from the California Department of Justice. I'm going to have those sources linked into the description so that you can read them for yourself. A few of these parts would probably be, be totally safe for you to just read and have no problem with. When it comes to my speculation or my opinions on some things, you're going to want to take everything I say with a grain of salt. I feel pretty confident in what I'm saying, but again, I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. I am not a lawyer, and I am not giving you legal advice. Now, for those of you that are unaware of the Title I firearms, what are they? Why were they interesting? Why are they now illegal? What's going on with those? This firearm right here is a semi-automatic, uses detachable magazines. I own it in the state of California legally. This is a firearm that has a vertical foregrip, a pistol grip, a flash hider. This gun is not equipped with a stock. This is a pistol stabilizing brace. This firearm has a barrel length of over 16 inches. It was a firearm that was not defined as a rifle, was not a pistol, and was not a shotgun. And because it was just a firearm, the state of California's assault weapon ban did not affect this firearm. Now, I still had to be aware of the NFA and various other regulations like that, but this gun here was totally legal. And the state didn't like that. The state especially didn't like that Franklin Armory was making it so readily available that they actually went as far as to intentionally stop people from being able to legally dross them as a completed firearm. Now, many people, myself included, acquired these others, and I'm going to refer to them as others or Title Ones, you know, interchangeably. These others were able to be acquired. Myself, the way I did it was I acquired a AR-15 pistol, the CA-11, one of Franklin's three pistols on the California handgun roster. Then I put a 16-inch upper on it with a vertical foregrip, meaning that this gun was, in theory, designed to be fired with two hands, was not meant to be shouldered, and therefore did not fit the definition of a rifle because the state's definition of a pistol excluded anything with a barrel length of over 16 inches, this gun became what was considered an other, both from the federal government and the state government, meaning that this gun was legal. Some people acquired them through the means of converting a rifle, which we'll talk about that later, and some people acquired them by the means of requiring a, or acquiring a stripped receiver and then building them out as an other. We'll talk about those at the end. But most people acquired them through the route that I did. The state of California was not so pleased with that. So what's going on with that now? A law passed, meaning that a law passed saying that you would have to acquire one of these prior to or on September 1st of 2020, and then you would have to register it as an assault weapon by the beginning of 2022, meaning that you had until December 31st of 2021 to register it as an assault weapon. Many people are confused because it is now September 20th and the assault weapon registration is not open, meaning that this gun, as far as the state of California is considered, is an assault weapon. However, I have until December 31st of 2021, and anyone else that has one of these has until that date to either make their firearm compliant or register it as an assault weapon. There's a secret third option, but we're going to talk about those two today. So if you go to this website here, it has a bunch of general information regarding the other assault weapon ban, the registration period, and then it also talks about some of the magazines. So this is their landing page. I'm going to have this link down here. It's oag.ca.gov slash firearms it takes you here. So then at the top of this page, other assault weapon registration information, and it discusses that the registration period will take be place between 9 a.m. on October 1st through midnight on the 31st. So you have about 
three months to either register your firearm as an assault weapon or make other changes or disregard the law completely. But again, I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. It goes on to discuss the actual definition of an assault weapon and why the others are an assault weapon. There is not going to be a way and there is not going to be a reason to convert your other to a compliant other. If you own an AR-15 style firearm, like one of these, that is currently using detachable magazines, using 30 round magazines, using a 16 inch barrel, semi-automatic, normal AR, other than the brace, no stock. The brace is questionable in some people's opinion, so I'm gonna definitely put that out there. There would be no reason to convert it to featureless because what you would have to be removing would be more than what you would have to remove on a rifle. So a pistol grip, thumb hole stock, folding or telescoping stock, grenade launcher or flare launcher, flash suppressor, vertical foregrip, threaded barrel, second hand grip, a shroud that is attached to, basically a barrel shroud, the hand guard, the capacity to accept a detachable magazine at some side, somewhere outside of the pistol grip, or if this was a fixed magazine other and you had more than 10 rounds in the mag, that would make it an assault weapon. Or if the overall length of it was below 30 inches. So if you wanted to comply with the law and convert your others to a not assault weapon configuration, you would be best bet with converting it to either a fixed mag rifle or a featureless rifle. If the firearm started its life out as a pistol, you could make it into a fixed mag pistol or uh, back into the configuration like the CA-11 or CA-7. Again, if you're going to do one of those things, I would highly recommend you look into this information yourself and come to your own conclusions, not just rely on me on the internet. Text of proposed regulations. So I think things could change at some point. If they do, I highly recommend you stay up to date before you do anything. If anything changes and I'm aware of it, I would definitely do my best to make you all aware of it. So I've highlighted some important pieces of information in, in here. Now it talks about section one, who must register. If you have an other category assault weapon, meaning a firearm like this that we've described in depth, and it is semi-automatic center fire that is not a rifle, pistol, or shotgun, and has any of those specified characteristics, it would be required to be registered or made compliant. Any person who prior to September 1st of 2020 lawfully possessed an other category assault weapon shall submit an application to register before January 1st of 2022. Now let me touch on this just real quick before we continue. Let's say you had an AR pistol prior to September 1st of 2020. It would be hard for the state to determine whether or not you actually had it in this other assault weapon configuration prior to then. But if you owned the lower that you made into it, if you owned the firearm that you made into an other, it would be hard for the state to determine whether or not you actually had it in that other configuration. Here is the actual description of what it would be considered an assault weapon. So again, the stuff that we talked about before, basically if it's a semi-auto center fire firearm that is not a rifle, pistol, or shotgun. So if you made it into rim fire, that would be fine as long as it did not fall into the assault weapon characteristics in any other way. So a semi-automatic center fire firearm that's not a rifle or pistol or shotgun and has any of these characteristics. Basically, they combined all of the characteristics from a rifle and a pistol assault weapon definition and just threw them together. So a semi-automatic center fire firearm that is not a rifle, pistol or shotgun that has a fixed magazine with the capacity to accept more than 10 rounds is included in the category of firearms that must be registered. Or if it is a semi-automatic centerfire firearm that's not a rifle, pistol, or shotgun that is below 30 inches in overall length. Now, that's something to be aware of. Pretty much every AR-15 with a standard length buffer tube and a 16-inch barrel is going to be around 32 inches. So, you're fine. Now, if you have a proprietary buffer tube assembly on this, something to be aware of. But again, but also we will be talking about buffer tubes just shortly from now weapons that will not be registered as an other category assault weapon. This is arguably more important um, and probably the most crucial piece of information that many people might not be already aware of. The department will not register a firearm that you did not lawfully possess on or before September 1st of 2020. The department will not register a firearm as an other category assault weapon if when 
if the firearm was required to have been registered under any other prior assault weapon registration period, meaning that if you've just been disregarding the law like a true American with your bullet button or 1994 assault weapon configuration like a normal looking AR-15 or AK or whatever, you would not be able to register your e super illegal assault weapon as a other assault weapon. This registration period is only for other assault weapons. It is not for the bullet button assault weapons, which will be able to be registered a little bit later if you missed that window. I made a video about that previously. Now C, the part that's been highlighted on the screen that you've probably been chomping at the bit for me to talk about. The department will not register a firearm as an other category assault weapon if the firearm has a rifle buffer tube. This firearm here has a buffer tube. Many people, the DOJ would probably be of the opinion that this is a rifle buffer tube. Now, it's not saying that these rifle buffer tube equipped firearms are assault weapons outside the definition of it. It is just saying, and this is just my opinion of it, again, not a lawyer, not legal advice. It is my opinion that if it had a pistol or a smooth buffer tube, it would be able to be registered, but they won't accept the registration of this legal other assault weapon because it has a rifle buffer tube, even if it's not intended to be fired from the shoulder. Even if common stabilizing braces are used with this style of, of buffer tube. The department will not register a firearm as an other category assault weapon unless the firearm is fully assembled and fully functional. And the main reason for that is because the definition of the assault weapon that they are allowing to be registered requires that it be a fully functioning firearm and not just a stripped lower. The department will not register a firearm if the firearm was manufactured by an FFL and does not have a serial number. If the firearm is a home-built firearm and it does not have a serial number that was assigned to the Department of Justice prior to September 1st of 2020, meaning if you have your unregistered ghost gun, this would not be an opportunity and this would not be a time where I would recommend you sending photos of it and the information to the state government. It then goes on to describe that you're going to have to provide your uh, your own personal information, like your address, phone number, that kind of stuff, as well as a description of the firearm, which includes make, model, serial number, caliber, barrel length, unit of measurement. If it's a fixed magazine or non, if the magazine is fixed or non-fixed, cartridge type that the firearm will fire, serial number, all identification marks, and then also if it is a less than 30 inch barrel, basically they're going to require that you fill out the pedigree of your firearm, all the information that would be listed on this gun as far as characteristics that describe it. Then you're going to have to upload five photos. Some of them are going to require that you actually have like a ruler visible, um, which is interesting because that I don't believe that was required the last time around. It's then going to cost you a total of $37.19 to register one firearm, as well as an additional $5 fee for each subsequent firearm. There is no limit to how many of these you could register. I highly doubt that many people have more than one or two of these. And again, you have from October 1st till December 31st of 2021 to get it done. Now, here's an important part. Now, after you have made your firearm a registered assault weapon. There are some things you cannot do. The main thing is the release mechanism for an ammunition feeding device cannot be changed because it is important. So if your firearm has a detachable magazine or if your firearm has a fixed magazine with a capacity of over 10 rounds, you cannot change the release mechanism. So let's say you had a fixed magazine other like this with a 11 or greater round magazine, that would not be allowed for you to change it to a detachable magazine. Why am I bringing that up? Why is that important? Well, this was important for the bullet button era, but it's specifically important for the people who maybe acquired them through the use of conversion from a rifle. The people who are of the opinion that you could have gotten any stripped lower that you purchased at any point in time in the state of California. And if it had been converted to a rifle, you could, they are of the, some people are of the opinion that you could take a firearm that started its life as a rifle or maybe was a stripped lower that was built into a rifle first, 
some people believe that you could then take the stock off and call that an other. I am not personally aware of any law that says that you can't as long as the overall length is over 26 inches and that the barrel length is over 30 is over 16 inches i'm not aware of anything saying you couldn't do that i'm not a lawyer though and i think that wades into much more dangerous territory many people are confident with the idea of converting a pistol to an other but not so much a rifle sorry i got eyelash in my eye some people have been getting hung up on the once a rifle, always a rifle statement that gets flown around on the internet. I don't necessarily believe, or many people don't necessarily believe that that applies in this situation because you're still not making an SBR. I believe the statement, and some people believe the statement would be more accurately represented as if it started its life as a rifle, it cannot be made into a pistol would be more accurate. But if it's not an SBR and it's not a rifle, some people think that you could make it from a rifle. And some people are saying, well, if the state says no, I'll just make my gun fixed magazine when I register it and not tell them. When you fill out forms like this, you typically have to click a little checkbox that says, under threat of perjury, of lying to the government, I swear that everything is super true and that everything that I filled out is accurate. So when you're lying on that form, I would highly recommend not lying on the forms. If you're gonna lie, it would probably be a better idea to just not have the DOJ give a re not give a reason to the DOJ to come snooping into your business. So it's up to you whether or not you choose to comply with that. So. For the people that want to convert it from a rifle, maybe your gun didn't start as fixed mag. Maybe it started as a featureless gun. If your gun was a firearm, like an AR-15, with no flash hider, no vertical forward grip, had a fin grip, not a pistol grip, and no stock, would that firearm that is still over a 16-inch barrel not a stock, no stock, no rifle buffer tube, so it's not designed to be shouldered, and it doesn't have any of the characteristics of an assault weapon if the state considered it a rifle. How would that play out? I'm not entirely sure. I think I could definitely see some people trying to register their featureless rifles that they, prior to September 1st of 2020, took the stock off and then called an other I could see some people potentially trying to register those guns. I'm not sure if that would entirely be more functional, because then you still have a featureless gun for the most part, but it also doesn't have a stock. Could you put a brace on it? I don't know. But at that point, if you're already trying to comply that hard, why are you trying to work around it in this way? Just kind of a thought. This is all subject to change. I'm just kind of curious to see how this all plays out. For the people that acquired stripped lowers, that started their life as a stripped lower, was never built into a rifle, and then made it into an other, I know many more people are comfortable doing that, even though the state DOJ, when you register it through the DROS system, when you purchase that stripped lower, it was called a rifle or a sh it was a rifle basically when it was registered but if it's never been a rifle i think there's much more room for argument there as far as whether or not it would be legal but i'm not telling you to do that i think it's a lot more dangerous of a territory to go in if you're going to try to do something like that so if you're going to do that that's got to be entirely up to you with information that you've found elsewhere to determine whether or not you're comfortable with this I'm likely going to be posting this video in various subreddits and threads uh, or places. I would hope if people post it on CalGuns, get some conversation going, because this is interesting. There might be some ways to potentially get a gun that would be considered an assault weapon, which has its inherent flaws as far as transportation, storage at home, and that kind of thing. But some people might want to have their guns. Now, for those of you that acquired a stripped lower prior to 2014 when lower receivers were not registered as a rifle or a shotgun and there was no registration of long guns people like that 
I mean, I've seen posts dating back on cow guns to like 2012, where people had made firearms that looked exactly like this, basically. And they felt comfortable posting that on the internet because they acquired their lower receiver, which was an other, and then built a firearm that was another. For those of you, I would personally not recommend registering as an assault weapon because the state doesn't know that you have that firearm. You could have that firearm in a legal configuration that the state doesn't specifically know about, and for me and many others, we would argue that that provides a level of benefit or value that a registered assault weapon does not. So ultimately, it's entirely up to you. The moral of the story, I'm sure I've lost a lot of you. Those of you that are still around at this 20-something long minute video, if you owned the other prior to September 1st of 2020, you have from October 1st to December 31st to register it as an assault weapon. There are some requirements. One of the big ones is that it does not have a rifle buffer tube. That's interesting. Let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think people should register their assault weapons? I'm curious how the process will go. I may register one of mine just to get an idea of how it works. Would I recommend most people do it? Absolutely not. All of my guns that I show on this channel have been documented in a way that the government would know about them. So I think my circumstances may be different from other people's. Should you just ignore the laws completely? I think that's up for you to decide. If you don't post about it on the internet, it's pretty hard to get caught. That being said, people like Alan Sun and Fang Yang have proven that sometimes people that are minding their own business can get screwed over by cops who want to enforce gun control. That's a risk that you're going to have to take should you choose to take it. Let me know what you think down below. You all know the drill. Have fun. Be safe. Stay dangerous. Peace.